Don McCulloch. Okay, great. <laughs> Some days I'm visited by a church of rain. The building wanders around the sky, then falls on top of me. Clouds are its ceiling, droplets the choir. Inside, stones achieve the ardent shades of stained glass. Jagged pines melt and glitter. The broken air remembers, and I listen in the steam and hiss of psalms for voices I have lost. I dream of striding down the pavement's dazzling aisles for years. Then I meet the clean smell left behind. Recall how only through forgetting can the church arrive, and I come back to my small garden, its chalky earth, young, forgiven. I'm very flattered to be invited to read here this evening. I'm going to read you um, a mixture of poems, as Sophie said, yeah, um, from probably the book I'm best known for is yeah, a book called The Frost Fairs. The title of the poem of this book actually came from a time when winter was much more severe than it is now. Um, we have storms nowadays, but at the beginning of the 19th century, it was so cold that the River Thames uh, froze solid and they were able to have these little frost fairs where they had all kinds of merry-go-rounds and other things going on. And this book often, um, it jumps around quite a lot through the 19th century, and um, this time it plats together all that with... Um, the convict trade, which was winding down at the time um, when people were being sent off to Australia. And it makes all that into a big old gay love poem called The, the Other Side of Winter. Overnight, the Thames begins to move again. The ice beneath the frost fair cracks. Tents, merry-go-rounds and bookstalls glide about on islands given up for lost. They race, switch places, touch, the printing press nuzzling the swings, then part, slip quietly under. Still, there is no end of crystal weather. I hoard coal, stare mostly at the chimney's back fingering the pipe he gave me on the key. Even now, it carries his greatcoat's whiff. Ale, oranges, resolve. I remember his prison ship lurking out from shore, huge as Australia. I'll write, my dear sweet man, he said, then squeezed my thigh and turned a sergeant again, bellowing at a flock of convicts. I do not have the nerve to light it. The mouthpiece is covered with teeth marks, sweat. I look out at my museum garden, the shrubs locked in glass cases, the latticework a galaxy of frozen dew. There is no snow in New South Wales. I cannot put the pipe down. It makes things happen. Last week, I heard a crash and ran outside to find a jackdaw flat on the lawn. It must have fallen from the sky, its wings locked together by hardened sleet its neck twisted as though broken from straining to see the incredible. The next poem I'm going to read to you is from um, the book I have coming out with Penned in the Margins, which is called Spacecraft. And it's a book which is themed all about uh, absence and nothingness and uh, emptiness. That's the theme running throughout. Very cheery. <laughs> It's not, it's not quite so intense, but this poem is. There's, there's one sequence in the book which is about um, 
my first partner who passed away a number of years ago, and um, yeah, I won't say any more about it. I've carried a door on my back for 10 years. You lugged it from the builder's yard. Now it's my turn to know its stiff weight. The slow chafe of pine against vertebrae. A decade-long kiss flush with splinters. I closed it when I left. The lock snicked. Then I noticed it hitching a ride. It never gives up. Patchy blue, invisible straps, a faint knocking, though nobody's there. So many slab hazards, repeated thumps to my skull, brass hinges clouting strangers as we creep into lifts, beds. I lie awake on its panels, framing rectangular thoughts. Obsessed by the side I can't see. What grows there? The problem is you died, so there's no way to set the thing down. No wall to prop it against with its stuck handle and fracturing paint. All day we continue our back to front tango. This dance where I almost but never arrive where I'm shut off to visitors for hours, then with one touch, swing wildly open. A lot of the book, the next book, is about um, words which have vanished from the English language. I've always been a bit of a geek for any old obsolete word. And one of the ones that I'm interested in is the word growlery, which was coined by Charles Dickens in Bleak House, for a room in which one goes to be angry <laughs> and just to get it all out, get it all out of the system. So this little short poem is called The Anger Room. I go in, wait beside a red wall. A row of doors takes shape. I slam them off their hinges. Mannequins show up. I use my cricket bat, send iPads and Twitter down measureless wells. The room accelerates, small buildings rise from the floor. I don a robot suit, rip out my limbs and fling them, become a giant hammer dropping my head. I drive the room through space. Smash it into planets till all that's left is broken. Till the door to the shame room emerges. I go in, wait beside a blue wall. So I'm going to read my final poem now, which is also from the Frost Fairs, which, as I say, has a lot of stuff about the 19th century in it. And this poem um, features James Murray, who was the first editor of the Oxford English Dictionary. And as anyone who's ever written a novel or dissertation knows, you get all these bits of paper all around your house. And this is the case for James Murray as well in this poem. And at this stage, he's only just doing the A words, and it's already getting a little bit too much. <laughs> the Dictionary Man. I am inside the language. Suspended at my desk between abject and abjure. My devils are the weight and texture of sounds. The particular smile raised by my beloved's use of asinine. The tang it leaves at the back of the throat. I am doing this for English, but words are made of air. Quotations flap off in drafts. The other day, I found alter ego under our bed. <laughs> I have 50 sorts of abusion, not even five of abuse. 
There are too many expressions for how I am feeling, imprinted, blurred at my edges. D, K and T wait in pasteboard boxes at the door, welcoming as Cerberus. When opening R, I discovered a dead rat. I have lost the 18th century, and Mr. Tyler holds G to ransom, the Vors Vase debate stubbornly refusing to pass. The ghost words enter my dreams. They slide about my head on street signs, messages from my love. The Almacoot is closing in. I am a vunted, darling. Please help. I wake at my desk, chastened and sweating, encrusted with names. Thank you. <laughs>